Hello guys, this is the Anime Aoi here, and we are playing Himawari the Sunflower. Okay, I should probably get some explaining to do here. Um, I decided to early cancel on Just Desserts, because I think it's just an off-time game where you play it for your private moments. So I'm not going to go into full detail with that. Second, I just bought this game. I don't know anything about it. And I find this, <laughs> this really cool. And also, with this, that's one small step for mankind, one giant leap for a man. <laughs> uh, this game is. This game is going to be stupid. I got a feeling that it's going to be stupid. But let's start! Yeah, I should leave that on. And guys, you know my rule. If there's no talking, then I'm going to shut up. If there is talk, no. Ah! Like tea. Now I got some tea here. Um, when there's talking, I'm going to shut up. When there's no talking, I'm going to speak for the character. Okay? You know the rule there. A boundless sky. Blue as far as the eye could see. We were aiming for the heavens. We were challenging space itself. Mankind's dream. I don't know if you guys can hear this. But hold up for me. Increase the volume to... No, I'm just going to do old made minus background. The background is literally loud as fuck right now in my ears. Sunflower, 21, ready for liftoff. The rocket launch, soaring into the blue sky. Carrying our dreams higher and higher. For beyond the clouds, and, oh. A rocket we launched from the roof plummeted toward the nearby athletics field before disappearing from view. I guess is that's like a modeled rocket that you can shoot off. I used to play a lot with those since I was a kid. Like, three of them? Or was it three times? I forget how many times we lost the rocket. <laughs> and doing it in a field of fireflies just makes it look more amazing. <laughs> Did that shit just fucking blow up? <laughs> and he sounds so nonchalant with it. Let me do this. This guy has... I'm not gonna lie, he almost has the same beard hair as I do. <laughs> it only grows underneath the chin. There's like no mustache that comes out with it. It's weird. It would appear there is still an unidentified issue with our navigation protocol. And also, what? What is he doing with his shirt? Hey, girl viewers, hope you're enjoying the view. Hold up, how do I... No, how do I just... Never mind. The rocket had crashed in the athletic field. 
It was lodged nose first into the ground, sending plumes of smoke into the sky. <laughs> and to top it all, Track Club was having practice there just as our projectile hit. Um, I wouldn't be there. I would say, run for your freaking life before we get fucking sued. <laughs> or a bit of freaking... Oh, Mr. Young Cheese is looking straight at us. These guys are crazy. <laughs> Above stretched a beautiful blue sky. That's right, we were aiming for the far heavens. And this is where I say, we're fucked. <laughs> we turn around to see Mr. Yamachi glaring at us fiercely from the doorway. As suspected from the tracking track club supervisor, it took him mere moments to reach the roof. What is with your shades? <laughs> or one? Ray the contraption. Oh, great. Another thing I like could possibly. I'm so confused. <laughs> Chris disapp shape disappeared from the roof. No, he didn't disappear. Vaulting over the fence, he gave himself to the... Did he just leap a face? <laughs> uh, I played too much Assassin's Creed. I do. I too claimed my heart and followed him. And then, crack, creak. I clunged on the rope ladder dangling from the school walls. We prepared it in case something like this happened. Looking down to see Press already darting across the, the front yard. <laughs> I'm. S My mind is boggled right now, actually. <laughs> Sky on March 20, 2050. 2338. So, in about how long is that? Let's see, we're 2017, so that will make 43 years ahead. Full moon would shine bright and clear in the night sky. The moon, the only celestial object that mankind has thus far managed to reach. At the dawn of the space age, numerous countries competed with each other to reach it. Almost as if it were an old home mankind felt obliged to return to. However, only two programs were able to land people on its surface. The United States Project Apollo and Japan's Kaguya Project. Even those indifferent to space have at least heard of Neil Armstrong and Amaya Diego. 
especially the latter, when he landed on the moon on his own. It, it shook the world in unprecedented ways. Its landing occurred roughly 20 years ago, on August 23, 29. His first words from the moon, while not recorded in textbooks, touched the hearts of many. They went like this. That's a small step for mankind. The irritating in Asako's voice was obviously enough to bite me through the receiver. Okay. Mark, I'm going to copy a word from you. Space is so cool. Who wouldn't want to be in the space? Even though we only discovered 5% of our ocean and we don't know much about it at all. Again, focus on oh, discovering all of the Earth and all of everything with it. Not just focus outside when we don't know anything about our own planet as well. I knew she'd come back to that again. I wanted to make it sound like a heroic tale of glory and adventure, but she took it as a joke. Get there, I didn't mention the part where I botched my landing and grazed my cheek in the process. If she knew I hit the ground face first, she would make fun of me for the rest of my life. I think from the moment we jumped off the roof, we were already considered a delinquent to begin with. That could be just me, though. And also, isn't that the old type of phone? <laughs> of your <laughs> what yeah I agree with the character what the hell is that supposed to mean <laughs> We've known each other for two years. That's not really much of a past to speak of. We were certainly classmates in high school and childhood friends. It was a bit too odd to call someone who you've known for two years a for two years a childhood friend, but well, that's how it really was. Being able to talk to a true friend while gazing at the starlight sky from the rooftop, I really did cherish moments like this from the roof. I screwed up there. At least the developer decided to give the main character a voice. Oh, now all I have to do is speak his flop bubbles. It hurt even more when she phrased it like a <laughs> like a question. Well, it's not like I really believed we'd be able to reach the moon with such a sh shoddy rocket, but you know. It was the spirit that mattered, the spirit. We were still young, shouldn't we be allowed a dream or two?
and she's blushing a bit. She had nothing to apologize for. Sokka worried about me living alone and occasionally came over to cook for me. Well, maybe a little more than often than just occasionally. During the spring break, she came over almost every day. On top of that, she also helped me with cleaning and laundry. I couldn't help but apologize. I, st I was still not sure why such a well-off girl would bother with someone of my caliber. It was a mystery even to me. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? What is with anime making people oblivious to others' feelings? Even in Flash, like, Iris, it's right in front of your fucking face. Pay more fucking attention. Did I really come off as that helpless? Yet this relationship had its own drawbacks. Sakulo playing the role of an older sister, she occasionally treated me like a child. I'd be fine if she was older than me, but being looked after by a classmate was kind of... Yeah, I can't say it was something I felt entirely comfortable with. Okay, I'm not that bad. <laughs> There's still a feeling. Oh, to tell the truth, Osako contest patronizing was one of the reasons I never had the chance to learn how to cook. But I couldn't, couldn't exactly tell her that, that to her face. I mean, her cooking was delicious, I w couldn't deny that. What would I do if she suddenly stopped coming over? What do you think we've been... It took her five minutes to get bored of stories about space development, but now she wants to hear constellations. I wonder why girls were so interested in stuff like that. And this was going to take a while. After a few moments of silence, her cheerful voice finally reached me through the receiver. How do you not see a large ass fucking triangle in the fucking sky? She had trouble finding even the three most obvious stars. You can only see the stars at night, though. I wonder if there ever come a time when we'd be able to spend a night together. I mean, it was hardly something two adolescents of the opposite sex could do lately. Actually, knowing Asaka, I wouldn't be too surprised if she showed up at my door one day with a backpack and a change of clothes. Didn't realize we've been talking for so long. Time flew when I talked with her, or rather when I talked about the stars. I can't. <laughs> 
hell? <laughs> this, uh, this looks so cute. <laughs> there was a click and the line went sound. Silence filled the night air. Also, the sounds of a music box in the background is not helping. <laughs> It made me realize just how cold I was. Cold. I guess nights could still get pretty chilly in the spring, huh? <sighs> okay, anyway. Might be a good idea for me to go back to bed right now. Well, I suppose a little more couldn't hurt. It wasn't every night that the moon was this beautiful. Lay down atop the roof and gazed up at the sky. The moon this bright, it wasn't really the best of nights for any sort of astronomical observation. I could see no more than a few hundred stars. And even that was just a tiny fraction compared to the sheer amount out there in space. The full moon regimed in the night sky. It was perfect to gaze at. Just the stars on the moon, nothing else. Springtime moon. Quite the romantic sight, if I did say so myself. I spotted the sun shining brightly in the sky. Could it be a shooting star? They said, the, they said that repeating a wish three times after spotting a shooting star should, shooting star would make it come true. I said three times that I thought it was only one. Or maybe it got destroyed over the years. Who knows? It was just a superstition, really. Shooting star would usually disappear before you got the chance to say, say it three times. Hell, more than often than not, you wouldn't even have enough time to think of your wish. But yeah, maybe I could try wishing upon the stars more. My own true wish. So I had yet to fade. Please hear me out. Okay, I did not know there was an intro here. What the fuck? That's our character. Was he wearing what? The? I am so confused. I don't know how to respond to what I'm looking at. <laughs> Also, if you guys want me to play Fruit of Grazia for a, for a session, if you want, then, um, yeah, leave me in a comment that you want me to play Fruit of Grazia. Although, I did play the game by myself a lot of times. For only three characters. I did not want to mess with the other two. Or especially Machina. Do not want to do anything to do with Machina. <laughs> Three times my wish was cast upon the sky. Once I was done, I grace returned my gaze. I saw that a ray of light was still up there, its tail extending along the borderless darkness. Just extending further and further. Huh? Soon, certain reality was merely a speck of dust drifting through space. It took about a second for an object like that to burn in the Earth's atmosphere. But this one has been blazing for over five now. I have heard that certain objects could sometimes reach the Earth's surface without completely burning up. 
Meteors, in other words? No way. And yet it was still drawing closer and closer without any hint of stopping. It was going to fall, no doubt about it. And close by. A steady descent made it look like a second moon. Red crimson moon. Crimson. A crimson world. Crimson memories. A stench of blood. Do we have a treasure backstory or something with meteor? <laughs> to like with heat that felt as though it scorched my nostrils. Soft touch of, of lips. The taste of tea. Sudden loud noise and the light quake that all pulled me back to reality. It fell. I had to go check it out. I left my house in a frenzy, overtaken by an impulse I couldn't quite understand myself. I think it crashed somewhere around the Memorial Park. This place at that... The place at that nightmare from two years ago. The place that marked the beginning of it all. The path to the Memorial almost overlapped with my usual route to school. I just had to take a right turn up ahead. Once I reached that crossroad, a familiar voice stopped me in my tracks. Yeah, he is wearing military gear. And that is a gun. I came face to face with a soldier. Oh, <laughs> well, not quite, just pressed. It was none other than Amaya Ginga, the president of, the, of our space club. As ridiculous as it may sound, that was actually his real name. It was a was outfit. Pajamas. And what about the machine gun dwindling from his soldier? Pillow. Wait, that thing's a fuck. There's no way that thing, that fucking thing, is a pillow. There is no fucking way. <laughs> Does he mean UFO as an alien spaceship? Those saucer shaped things? And it was a meteorite. Hold up, I need to move this over here because I need to see something. What? Okay. Okay, I just ended up with something weird. Okay, let's put this back. Okay, so that's what he meant. For a second, I thought he meant might be going on something like this, but... What was that thing then? Mind refreshing my mind. Alright, I do vaguely recall hearing something along those lines. It sounded sort of ridiculous, so I must have decided to block it out of my mind. The memorial part should be just around the corner. We continue onward together. The Memorial Park, an area built upon the ashes of the incident from two years ago. The crash of the high altitude airliner SA Dan 08. 518 souls lost. It was truly a tragic accident. The Sedan 80 was the first high-altitude airliner ever built for civilian use, a so-called space plane, developed by the Senji Group. It was built to support transportation of about 500 passengers to a space colony drifting along the satellite orbit. 
it was the way of the future. Its commemorative test flight was two years ago. Back then, phrases like space travel still had a promising ring about the future to them. A great variety of people from the wealthy and famous to the mundane participated in the test flight. For some reason, I feel like we're in Skyrunners. If you ever seen that shit, seen that movie, that movie was actually pretty awesome. They were supposed to be the first civilians to set foot in space. I froze up. Before we stood, a cenotaph erected to honor the memory of the 518 unfortunate souls who lost their lives that day. I felt as if it was trying to tell me something. Crossing this point requires a strong and resi resilient heart. Do you still wish to carry on regardless? Do you still wish to aim for the, for the far heavens? Yes, keep the fuck going. All right. It was a foolish question. My mind had already been made. We hurried past this you know, tough toward the pillar of flame. Soon enough, we came upon a small crater. I could see tiny flames flickering in the trees, most likely caused by the crash. It almost felt like a reenacting of that night from two years ago. But why here in the exact same place? There was something inside the crater. A meteorite? No, it couldn't be. It clearly looked artificial. A massive cyl cylindrical chunk of metal was lodged into the ground like a huge stake. Stake. Stock. Never mind. First thing that came to mind was a skate pod from Apollo, or was it so was Soyuz? Sort of vehicle designed to re enter the atmosphere. Chris took a step forward to the object. I hesitantly followed him. Upon closer inspection, I noticed that the metal object had a small hatch with a handle on it. I gulped. Oh, I see. Anything that survived a crash like this would be nothing short of a monster. There was no way they could still be alive. I mean, no one could survive something like this. Unless they built it for some... <laughs> Creek. I felt like headed something that couldn't be alive. Something that shouldn't be alive. A monster. Then, whoever is behind that door was just like me. I constantly reached out to. What? What's wrong with me? My mind told me to stop, but my body simply couldn't resist the urge. Oh, I'm already past the time limit. Um, see you in the next part. <laughs>